Another testing that can be used to test for upper motor neuron dysfunction is the Babinski test or Babinski reflex. Remember that this reflex will appear abnormal in children even though they do not have a upper motor neuron response or dysfunction. In this test, the patient will be laying down supine. You will use the handle of a reflex hammer to stroke along the plantar surface of the patient's foot. Toe flexion is normal. Toe extension at the great toe is considered abnormal. This test should look something like this. Notice the subtle flexion of the toe. An abnormal test would demonstrate extension of the toe like this. The finding of clonus during a neurological assessment on the patient is the phenomenon of involuntary rhythmic contractions in response to a sudden sustained stretch in a patient who is hyperreflexive and or has hepatic encephalopathy. The way to perform this test is the physician applies a sudden stretch which activates the muscle spindums, spindles resulting in the stretch reflex. Tension is produced by the muscular contraction which activates the Golgi tendon organs which in turn activate an inverse stretch reflex relaxing the muscle. If the stretch is sustained, the muscle spindles are again activated causing a cycle of alternating contractions and relaxations. For lower extremity, the exam should look like this. A normal exam for clonus looks like this. Notice the brisk flexion and then rapid release of the foot. A positive test for clonus would look like this. A final test for cerebellar function and balance is called the Romberg test. The patient stands with arms outstretched at 90 degrees with heels and toes together. Eyes are open. The provider then asks the patient to close their eyes to check proprioception only. The patient with intact cerebellar reflexes will be able to remain upright and not waver. Please spot your patient and do not let them fall during this test. Again, this is a test for cerebellar dysfunction and should look something like this. Notice the patient without cerebellar dysfunction is to remain standing and not wavering. The physician is mindful of spotting the patient so that if they did have cerebellar dysfunction and did waver, that they would not fall down. This is what a positive Romberg test would look like. Notice that the patient, without the physician's assistance, is not able to stand up. The final neurological assessment will be the gait assessment. This also looks at disturbances of proprioception, either from neuropathy or posterior column disease. We will demonstrate the heel-to-toe, on-toes, and on-heels gait. In these dysfunctions, very often you will have wide-based gait, or a steppage gait in an uncoordinated appearance. We will demonstrate the negative tests for each of these. Okay, so for the first gait of being heel to toe, take your heel, touch it to your toe, and then roll onto your, the ball of your foot, mm -hmm. and then repeat with the next foot. Heel to toe, and then roll on the ball of your foot. Okay, okay walk towards me. Thank you. 
good. We're going to turn around, walk back towards the wall on your toes. And then walk back towards me on your heels. This completes the remainder of the neurological assessments. These are to be combined with the cranial nerve assessment for your practical exam.